In this video, we solve problem 8.3.5-T from Essentials of Statistics, sixth edition by Mario Triola. The problem statement asks us to use technology to find the p-value for the hypothesis test described below. We're told that the claim is that for a smartphone carrier's data speeds at airports, the mean is equal to 12.00 megabits per second. The sample size is n equals 13, and the test statistic is t equals 2.142. And then we're given something that looks like this. They're asking us to just enter the p-value, and they want us to round to three decimal places. So the first thing that I would do um, for this is, um, just for any other hypothesis test, I want to write down the claim and use the claim to infer both the null and alternative hypotheses. So it says the claim is that the mean is equal to this value. If that is not true, then we would have this. The one that does not contain the condition of equality is the alternative hypothesis. And in this case, if I change that um, not equal to sign to an equal sign, I get the claim. So the claim happens to be the null hypothesis. Okay, so from this we can see that we have a two-tailed test, and that's important because the p-value is the area in the tails beyond that test statistic, and we might have to double that area if it's a two-tailed test. Um, so if we're in the case where we have a two-tailed test, we're going to double that area. Okay, and then what else are we given? We're given that the sample size is n equals 13. And our test statistic t equals 2.142. I'm not really sure that the sample size is relevant here. But here's the idea. We've got some sampling distribution of sample means. So we find a whole bunch of samples of size n equals 13. And every time we create a sample, um, we compute the mean. And then we do that over and over again for lots of different samples. And then we look at the distribution of the sample means. Back in 6.3, we said that the mean of the sample means is equal to that true population mean. And when we draw this sampling distribution, we're assuming that that null hypothesis is true. So we're assuming that the mean of the sample means is the population mean, which is 12.00. And the question is, for our x value, x bar, whatever that is, and we'll have x bar down here, is that x bar significantly high or significantly low, um, given that this null hypothesis is true? Well, in order to figure that out, we need to convert this sampling distribution of the sample means to a student t distribution. And we're converting to a student t distribution because um, the population standard deviation is not known. It's because sigma, that's our symbol for the population standard deviation, it's unknown. Now, student t distribution looks a lot like a standard normal distribution. It has a mean of zero, but the variance or the uh, standard deviation is not equal to one. Uh, the variation is different. Um, these tend to be a little bit wider and I didn't really draw a very good uh, student t distribution this time. It should be more symmetric than the one I've drawn here. Okay, so what else, what are we told? Well, we are told that we have a sample size of 13, which is related to this. And then we're told that this X bar, we're not, we don't actually even know what X bar is. It wasn't given in the problem statement, but it corresponds to T equals 2.142. So our test statistic T is right here, and that's equal to 2.142. And so if we want the p-value, and that's what we want, since it's a two-tailed test, I want the p-value is the probability that we have a test statistic um, equal to the value from our sample 
or a test statistic that is more extreme than that. But when we're talking about a two-tailed test, um, we don't care if we're too low or too high. So we want all the test statistics that are that distance from t equals zero. So I'm going to go to the other side by symmetry. This will be t equals negative 2.142. And I'll want that area as well. So I'm saying, what are what's the probability of getting a test statistic in this range or in this range? The probability is the associated area under the curve, and that's the p-value. OK, now we don't have a table that gives us areas for student t distributions um, because um, student t distributions have different shapes depending on the sample size. Actually, now I'm seeing where I need that sample size. Uh, the student, uh, when we're talking about a student t distribution, um, this shape depends on the sample size, which, and we typically think of it as depending on what's called the degrees of freedom of our data set. So the degrees of freedom in this context are just given by the sample size minus one. So our sample size is 13. So the sample size minus one is just 12. Okay, so I want the area in the, the tails, um, but I don't have a table of these values because um, we'd have to have a different table. You remember that two page table that we have for positive z-scores and negative z-scores? We'd have to have a different table for every value of n. That's difficult to do. Um, so typically we use technology to find these areas. And I'm going to show you how to use Excel to do that. Okay, so the p-value is equal to this. It's gonna be two times the probability that our test statistic t is greater than, it's really greater than or equal to 2.142. Um, and if I want that probability, I can use Excel this way. It's the function is called t.dist. That would give me area to the left of a test statistic. If I want area to the right of a test statistic, um, I can do dot rt for area to the right. And then you enter the test statistic here. And you enter the degrees of freedom, which in our case is 12. And if you multiply that by two, that's going to give you twice that area, which is our p-value. Now there's another possibility. Because it's a two-tailed test, Excel gives you this function, t.dist dot two t for two tail and you'll still enter the test statistic t and the degrees of freedom and what this does is it it recognizes whether this is a positive t value or a negative t value and then it finds the area in the corresponding tail so if this is positive it gives you area to the right if the t uh, test statistic t is negative it gives you area to the left for that particular uh, distribution which is dependent on the degrees of freedom um, and then it doubles that area in the tails to get you this. So you can either use this two-tailed um, function or you can use the right tail and then double it and you're gonna get the same value either way. So um, I'm going to highlight those. These are the functions in Excel and Excel tells you that this is where you enter the value of T and that this is your degrees of freedom. So I'll do this in Excel now. Okay, so we'll enter um, equals t.dist, t and then you've got your three uh, student t distribution functions. tdist uh, gives you the area to the left of a particular t value when you know the degrees of freedom. The 2t1 will give you area in two tails so it'll give you the area beyond your test statistic, either to the right or to the left, depending on whether you're on the right or left side of the distribution. And then it doubles it. Or t.dist.rt gives you the area in the right tail. So I think I will do the two-tailed test first. And if notice that when I enter the open parentheses, it asks you for an x value and a degrees of freedom. We're thinking of this as a t value but it's the same thing, 2.142, that, that was given to us. And then the degrees of freedom was 12. So we get that value, or we could do the right tail 
and we can multiply it by two. So I'll do two times t dot dist dot rt for right tail, and then we'll do 2.142 for our test statistic and 12 here, and we get exactly the same answer. I just wanted you to see that you get the same answer either way. And um, in our case, that p-value was approximately equal to 0 0.0534. And they asked us to round to three decimal places, so we'll round to 0 0.053. And that's it.